We now move to our Kerry 150 history moment, and I'll recognize Councilmember Yerha. Thank you very much, Mayor. It's the time of year when I hope you'll be spending enjoyable hours in Cary's beautiful parks. And you might like to know a little bit of history about a few of them. So here goes. Now home to some 30 parks, you may be surprised to know that Cary had no official public parks until 1967, when the town council unanimously voted to turn a roughly three and a half acre plot of municipal property off of Dixon Avenue into a ball field. The same ball field that's now part of Lexi Lane Park. Lexi Lane was the town manager during Carrie's 100th birthday 50 years ago, by the way. And yes, Lexi Lane was the name of a person, not the name of the street where the park is located. <laughs> the proposal to turn this land into a ball field was put before council by then council member Fred Bond, who is understandably now the namesake for the largest municipal park in Cary. Bond served as mayor of Cary from 1971 to 83, and when he assumed office, Cary's town limits extended to approximately Maynard Road, and the area surrounding Bond, today's Bond Park was labeled simply as undeveloped. The lake was known as Lake Number no. 3. <laughs> Initially in 1970, Lake Number no. 3 and the land surrounding it was proposed as a county recreational area, but county officials struggled to fulfill that dream, shall we say. In 1974, the town of Cary assumed responsibility. Funding for a park proved a challenge, but the dream became a reality. Moreover, initially promising an 80-acre park, they even exceeded expectations by opening a park almost four times as large. And of course, Bond Park is now one of Cary's signature destinations. In addition to buying county land in the 1970s, the town of Cary met its growing demand for recreational spaces by acquiring slivers of land left over from developments of the 1940s and 50s. These included the land for Heater Park, donated by Jesse Heater, the wife of Russell Heater. Russell was affectionately known as Mr. Cary. While he had many accomplishments, it makes sense to have a park in his honor, for recreation was one of his top priorities. He not only headed the committee that secured the first football stadium at Cary High School, he also served as the first president of the Cary Recreation Club. In addition to land donations by private citizens like the Heaters, corporations also contributed parcels for Cary's growing park system. For example, Greenbrier Construction Company donated land on Walnut Street for what is now R.S. Dad Dunham Park. In the 80s, the pond and 30 acres of shrubs, flowers, and vegetables on the Dunham's homestead was the closest thing Cary had to a botanical garden. Although some wanted their property itself for a park, the Dunham property became Glen Eyre instead, Cary's first retirement community. Nonetheless, in honor of his green thumb and of his 40 years of service as an educator at Cary High School, Dad Dunham eventually got a park in his honor on Walnut Street. And we mustn't forget Dad's wife, Rachel. She was a founder of the original Cary Historical Society which led to the creation of the Friends of the Page Walker. Around the same time, five other developers gave land on Tarbert Drive for what is now Annie L. Jones Park. Miss Annie served as town clerk from 1954 to 1981. During her tenure, Carrie hired its first town manager, Howard Stewart. Although Stewart did a great job as manager and was more than qualified, after meeting Jones and witnessing her extraordinary capabilities, he did openly question why he had been hired and not Jones. <laughs> Unfortunately, at that time, Jones's gender made her seemingly unfit for the position, which was plainly stated when council member Tom Griffiths petitioned for Jones' appointment to the town manager position. She would have been the first female town manager in the state. I think we missed the boat. But the town recognized Jones's exemplary service by naming a park in her honor in 1979. While appreciated, the land donated for these latest parks totaled only about 10 acres, hardly enough for Cary's projected population. Therefore, in 1974, the town council passed the Land Dedication Ordinance, which required developers to donate an acre of land for public recreation for every 35 dwelling units. How about that? Consequently, other municipal parks began to appear in the late 70s and 80s. Parks such as Robert V. Godbold Park, it's named for Bob Godbold, Cary Council member from 1975 to 89, 
and a proud carry fireman. With tennis courts, basketball courts, a playground, trails, and spaces for skate enthusiasts, as well as for our four-legged furry friends, Godbold Park is accurately described as multiple parks in one. Just like Godbold himself, who was one man who served many important functions, Godbold is one park that satisfies many needs. Harold D. Ritter Park is named for a former Cary Council member and one of Cary's most distinguished mayors from 1983 to 1987. Mayor at the time the Page Walker Arts and History Center began its re renovation, Ritter was keenly tuned in to Cary's parks, recs, and cultural resources. Ritter Park not only boasts fun spaces for young people, such as slides, a climbing wall, and a playhouse, it also has easy walking trails that lead to the Stevens Nature Center at Hemlock Bluffs Nature Preserve. Hemlock Bluffs, one of my favorite spots in Cary, is 140 acres large and home to many eastern hemlock trees, which are rare here in the Piedmont area due to our warm climate. The hemlocks grow along the preserve's bluff, bluff, which is a type of cliff that usually borders a river, and that's true in Cary's case. Three walking trails provide beautiful views of the hemlocks along the bluff. And the Stevens Nature Center also offers a variety of nature programs that have something for everybody. Then, some very notable parks have come about since the dawn of the new millennium. More recent parks. There's, what else? Jack Smith Park. There he is, smiling broadly. Named for our colleague and Carrie's longest serving council member. Self-described as a kid at heart, Jack said the once that he would probably be the first one to go under the spray ground. And I can't blame him. I wonder if he was. <laughs> How could anyone resist running through the fountain-like water features of the town's first spray ground? The park is home to other notable features like a 10-foot tall climbing rock wall, a dog park, greenway trails, and a playground. Then there's Thomas Brooks Park, named after Tom Brooks, noted Cary dentist and council member from 1975 to 1997. With 224 beautiful acres, visitors to Thomas Brooks Park may enjoy a pickup game of basketball, participate in a softball or baseball game, use the soccer fields, walk the trails, or reserve one of the picnic shelters for a family outing while enjoying the adjacent playground. And speaking of playgrounds, there are must-see at Marla Durrell Park. Home to the Kids Together Playground, Durrell Park boasts a dragon climbing feature, progressive design elements and landscaping, and a play area where kids of all physical and mental abilities can enjoy fully integrated play in a multi-sensory environment that strengthens both the muscles and the minds. This has been Marla's pet project for years, although she's been involved in so many carry activities, including service on the council from 1999 to 2007, and she's now a member of the Historic Preservation Commission. Then we have Kay Struffolino Park, one of the latest additions to our park systems. Formerly known as Meeting Place Park, this community gathering space within walking distance of the Cary Arts Center was recently named in honor of 2010 Hometown Spirit Award winner Kay Struffolino. She's still an active volunteer for the Town of Cary events and programs, especially for, though not limited to, the Park Recreation and Cultural Resources Department. Everybody knows Kay, and everybody loves Kay. So what's the moral of the story? If you also live a life dedicated to helping your fellow citizens, like these folks, and so many of our other park namesakes have, who knows, someday you may also have one of Carrie's many wonderful parks named in your honor. I want to thank those listed here for their help with this presentation, and I ask you not to forget to visit Carrie150.org for the latest information on Carrie's sesquicentennial. But that's it for tonight, and thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Yerha. I kind of hate that you stopped. I want to do more. <laughs> I can go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We probably ought to get to the business. <laughs> but thank you so much. Very informative, very interesting.